today, I'm going to share what I've learned about how to get the best from your pre-show routine. These are things that I do to get the best from my warm-up routine because that was something that took me a long time to really kind of dial in and figure out. And so I want to give you just a guideline here of how to get the best from your pre-show routine. Welcome to the Resilient Rainer, the premier podcast focused on mental performance for equestrians and improved horse show performance. Whether you're a rookie rainer or a seasoned competitor, this show is for riders who want to take their skills to the next level and achieve their full potential in the show ring. I'm Nicole Burnett, and I'm a master mindset coach who's obsessed with helping you achieve all those horse dreams you always thought were impossible. Join me each week to develop a show-ready mindset and gain the competitive edge you need to compete with confidence. Hey there, friend. Nicole Burnett here, your host of the Resilient Rainer podcast and your friendly neighborhood mental performance coach. So if you're like me, when you go to the show, the warm up area can be it can be the most intimidating part of a show. And even if you're at a really well run show, a great venue, maybe the arena is really spacious, the you know, supervised, everything can be generally pleasant, but every single one of us, you still have to deal with all of the pressures of warming up and getting your horse ready to compete before you go in the arena. And if you're at a slightly less organized venue, the warm-up arena, it can just be straight chaos, right? You've got excited horses, excited riders in cramped conditions. So today I'm going to share what I've learned about how to get the best from your pre-show routine. These are things that I do to get the best from my pre-show routine, my warm up routine, because that was something that took me a long time to really kind of dial in and figure out. And so I want to give you just a guideline here of how to get the best from your pre-show routine. Again, this is what I do to get the best from my pre-show routine. And I'm going to share it with you today. All right. So you're going somewhere and it's up to you. You're the writer it's up to you to get the best out of your warm up time. All right. You put your hard earned money down to pay your entry fees to be at the show. And of course, you want everything to go smoothly. One of the things that I found for me was that my best friends were related to a quality warm up. And that doesn't necessarily mean whatever you think that means, right? But just that a good warm up matters. And so there's a lot that goes into that. Okay. So, how can you get the best out of your warm up time? Here are things that I do. One of the biggest things, actually, is to practice riding with other horses at home. And I say that because I love to ride by myself. (laughs) I love it. I know there's so many folks who love to ride with other people. They want to schedule riding base. I love riding solo. I love being able to be completely in the zone. I love being able to absolutely hog the arena to ride wherever I feel like. I love doing serpentines and figures and I love using the whole arena. Like I love just being able to ride alone and, you know, work on whatever cool gymnastics come up to me. But if you only ever school or you only ever ride your horse at home and it's a quiet place and there's no distractions, you and your horse are going to have a really hard time in a crowded warm up. All right. And even if your horse has been showing for years, they can still benefit from having time in a group setting. And so if you get kind of flighty, if you got nervous, or you can feel yourself getting more excited when there's a bunch of horses around, this is your sign. 
don't put it off. Okay. This is your sign that you need to do this more often. This is your sign that you need to call up a buddy and be like, Hey, when can we ride together? If you have a trainer, Hey, like, can we do a group lesson? Hey, is there an adult riding club in your area? There's so many options. This doesn't have to be like a huge deal. I used to ride at a barn that in the winter had a very small indoor and there was very, very crowded. And after riding in that arena and getting two-year-olds, you know, they're starting two-year-olds in that arena and I'm just trying to weave in and out of the two-year-olds in the tractor. That was so good for me and so good for handling warm-up arenas. It was amazing. And basically, this is a skill and it's something that you can and should practice outside of your show time. All right. Practice riding with other horses when you're at home because it's just practice. It's a skill. Okay. The second thing that really helps me have more successful warm up pen time is to get there early. Oh, I hate that feeling of like, I mean, and I've done it, so I know this feeling, but I hate the feeling of getting to a show late and having to like throw on your tack, throw on your outfit and hurry down to the warm up pen and you just get like five minutes to trot around before you go in. And that's really stressful for me. It's a lot more challenging to stay in a really centered, focused, competitive frame of mind. I feel like it just doesn't put me in the best spot for having the best ride that, you know, I feel like to have the best ride, I want my horse and I to be physically warmed up, um, reduce risk of injury and be ready to do our best ride and also to be in the best frame of mind. And of course, (laughs) I'm going to say if you have a young horse, an inexperienced horse, a high strung horse, also I'm going to throw out there, if you're a high strung rider, give yourself more time, just extra time when you're traveling, extra time to get organized, you know, just give yourself like an extra half hour. If you figure out whenever you think you're going to go, give yourself an extra half hour just to be on the safe side. Just being able to have some time to walk calmly around can be really helpful. I find it really helpful to just know that I have time to walk calmly around. Okay, the third thing, and this is one that definitely took me some time to figure out, and this is because this is related to the one that I just said, is you have to figure out what is going to settle your individual horse. It's been different with different horses that I've owned because sometimes you're going to have a horse that's like, okay, we're going to go in, we're going to spend 15 to 20 minutes literally just walking around before we can get to work, especially at a show. There's all this stuff. You're like, I need to plan 15 to 20 minutes of just walking around before we can go to work. Other horses you got to get them in the warm up. You got to like start trotting right away. You might want to be doing lots of changes of direction. You really are doing different maneuvers to get them really focused on you as the rider to block out any sort of distractions. Some horses, they do really well when they can get a little bit of lunging. Um, some horses, they might just like to kind of stand around and absorb the atmosphere. And so, for better or worse, I am sorry, not sorry. There, This is the, you know, trial and error part of it. Okay. But you know your horse. You are the expert on your horse. Okay. You're going to have an idea of what's going to work for your horse just because you know their personality, you know your day-to-day routine and, you know, how you normally ride. So you're going to have an idea of what works for your horse. But take that into account. If your horse needs you to do a lot of just trotting off and doing different, I don't know, bending, flexing, just getting them really focused on you. That's not necessarily the same horse and rider combo as someone who needs to go, you know, be like, yeah, we do 20 minutes of just walking and breathing. So just know that. Okay. This next one is a personal favorite of mine because it really threw me so hard when I started showing and When I started writing, I was taught that you always walked the first 10 minutes and you always walked the last 10 minutes. And it was very kind of structured of 
you were going to do this. And you had this kind of rhythm to your ride where you'd ride and then you'd trot and you'd lope and you'd do all of these things. But it was, you know, a very specific rhythm to the ride. And um, you're using the whole arena and you're doing all this stuff. And then we'd go to the warm up, go to a show, and you couldn't replicate that, right? <laughs> like you can't replicate at a show what you're doing at home. It was really hard for me where I was like, well, you're telling me to ride the same, but I did to the show and it really threw me for such a loop mentally because I wasn't warming up the way I would at home. And so a big key for me was learning to warm up like I would at home. All right. And so for me, honestly, so much of that was mental because I'm a big fan of easing into a ride. I like to kind of see where my horse is at. I like to just start with a walk, right? Like it really helps me mentally so much to just connect with my horse when I start with a walk and just kind of really tune into where my horse is at, where I'm at, where that unique ride is going to be. But especially at a show, so many riders, they get on and they just start kind of trotting around. They're starting doing stuff. There's a lot of action. Also, when you're at the show, there's other people who've already been riding. You know, there's a lot going on. And so learning to warm up like I would at home, like I might normally start with a walk and start with just a loose rein, rolling my shoulders. I love to do that. Was really helpful. (laughs) And so, you know, the situation is a little different at a show. So put on your brain, but basically think about what works for you at home and try to make a few changes as you can. And related to this, for me, it was really helpful to think about what warm up routine do I have at home? Because I'm describing myself, but basically for myself and my horse, the more that we had a routine, it was helpful for both of us to settle into the work, right? My horse can settle in, I can settle in, and it becomes a mental cue, well, also physical, but it becomes a cue for us to just settle into this work, which was really helpful. So just warm up like you would at home and give a little bit of thought to the routine that you have at home. And no matter what other people are doing, don't be afraid to do what works, right? If you get there and you like to walk around, don't be afraid to just walk around. The other thing that was helpful too is to figure out like, I know that I modified my at-home routine after going to shows. So for example, sometimes at home, I might pick up the reins, I might move my horse around, I might do a lot of things that maybe, they might require more space is what I'm trying to get at. But when I know that when I go compete, the warm-up arena can be quite limited in space. So I used that and I adapted my warm-up routine so that I could figure out a warm-up routine where we could connect mentally as a team in a way that required less space. So that was a big one. Okay, next one. Don't overdo it in the warm-up pen, okay? So (laughs) sometimes you can get to the show and you're all amped up or honestly sometimes it's your horse is really amped up because I've had a pretty hot horse before and you're just like oh my goodness what's going on but don't try to do it all in the warm-up all right like you want your horse warmed up you know we don't want any injuries but you really don't want to overdo it so hard <laughs> in the warm-up pen that when you go in the arena to compete, you got no horse left. All right. So figure out that line between when you're ready, you and your horse are ready, but you don't want to be overtired. Okay. So this is again, something that you can learn at home to have an idea of, okay, about how much work does old Dobbin here need before they're ready, About how much work do they need before they peak? And This is really about learning to have that feel of your horse because you're going to feel that when you're riding at home. And so you need to learn to recognize the feeling of, ah, 
my horse is ready to do work, but they're not too tired to perform. Because that's a very distinct feeling of, you know, you're riding along, you feel them, you feel their muscles start to warm up, you feel them limber, you feel them, you know, kind of stretching more, you feel them tuning and mentally. And then there's like that point in your ride where like, they're ready. They're really ready to go to work, to try something new, to up the difficulty. You feel that. So pay attention to that at home. And of course, I need to mention, I have to tell you this as your friend, I swear your horse is not going to learn anything at the show when you're warming up. Okay. And you're not going to take your spins from a plus half to a plus one in the time it's going to take you to warm up before you compete. I promise. I know. I'm sorry. Sorry to be the bear of bad news. It's not going to happen. So you don't need to run through every single maneuver like five or 10 times before you go in and do a run. Okay. You don't need to do it. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Um. Also, I really just need to bring up that please be polite please be considerate. Do not be the jerk who's just running people over. Do not be trying to go the opposite direction of the warm-up circles. Do not be trying to walk in the middle of the low plane. Just be considerate. Don't stop like right in front of people. Just don't be a jerk. Okay. If you need to talk to somebody, if you need to talk to a friend or an instructor, leave the warm up arena. Don't stand in the corner and cause a traffic jam. Um, also, eyes up, eyes up. Okay. Because if you're staring at the ground, you're a lot more likely to have a crash. All right. Good. And another personal favorite is before you go in, just take a minute to gather yourself, all right? Get your head on straight. Just get in that mental headspace that you need to be in before you compete. You just take a minute, get yourself, calm yourself, centered, get a little relaxed, and just feel that like positive, excited energy that you get to go have fun and that you get to go do this. You get to go ride your horse and just have a good time, all right? You are going to go, wow, everybody. I can tell. I can tell you're going to wow everybody. But just take a couple minutes. Get your head on straight. You know, we're just going to get in that competitive space so that you can do your best and be fully present, fully in the moment, relaxed, calm, but super focused. So there you go. Those are the things that have really helped me personally of how to have more success in the warm up pen. I know that that's going to be helpful to you too, because as simple as it might sound when I say this out loud, I swear it really took me years to knock it through my thick skull. So <laughs> there you go. And if this is your jam, come join me in Resilient Rainer Academy. This is your step-by-step manual, your like Lego manual of how to build confidence and build a solid mindset so that you can level up faster and just have more fun kicking butt along the way. And don't forget money back guarantee. So there's no risk to you. I'd love to have you with all of us inside and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much for being here.